I'm getting ready for a total solar eclipse to see the moon completely block out the light from the sun. But how does this happen? And why do I need these? Let's find out together in this episode all about the solar eclipse. Before we jump into learning, you may want to review the phases of the moon. If you're not familiar with how the Earth, Sun, and Moon typically interact. With that said, let's look at a new moon. This is the phase that the moon has to be in for a solar eclipse to take place. A solar eclipse happens when a new moon moves between the Earth and the Sun, blocking some or all of the Sun's rays from reaching the Earth. We know that the Sun is way bigger than the moon, so how is this possible? It just so happens that even though the Sun is 400 times wider than the moon, it's also on average 400 times farther away, which means that when we view them from Earth, the two objects appear the same size. Why isn't there an eclipse every month at new moon? If the moon's orbit were perfectly aligned with the Earth's, we would, but we don't. That's because the moon's orbit is tilted by about five degrees and not perfectly circular. What that means is at new moon, the moon can be as much as five degrees away from the sun, passing above or below the sun in the sky. But sometimes, everything aligns and at new moon the moon falls perfectly between the sun and the earth and when that happens we get a solar eclipse a solar eclipse is when the moon blocks the sun casting a shadow on the earth this alignment happens at least twice per year this long shadow cast by the moon usually misses the earth but not during an eclipse. There are actually two shadows from the moon, one inside of the other. If you're still here liking this video, hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. When the moon does eclipse the sun, it casts two types of shadows on Earth, a darker, smaller shadow, a narrow cone, tapering to a point away from the moon, known as the umbra. Umbra means shadow. If you happen to be standing on Earth inside of the path of the umbra, the moon appears big enough to completely block the sun. Just outside the dark umbral shadow is a wider region. If you're standing inside this region on Earth, the sun is only partially blocked, which means you can stand still see some of the sun past the moon. In this region, you're still technically shadowed because you are getting less light from the sun, but it's not quite as dark as the umbra. This region is called the penumbra. Pen means nearly or almost. When the umbra reaches the earth, we get a total solar eclipse. But what does this look like to us standing on earth looking up? The eclipse happens in phases. As the moon sweeps over us, we begin to see less and less of the sun as the sun appears as a shrinking crescent and the sky begins to darken. Finally, the moon completely covers the sun and the umbra moves over your location. You are experiencing totality. Because the moon and the sun are nearly the same apparent size, totality is brief only lasting a few minutes. This length of time depends on your physical location, how close you are to the middle of the umbra. All right, pause, time to talk safety. Is it silly to look directly at the sun at any point in time? Yes. Yes. Will you most likely go completely blind? Probably not. But I think it's important that everyone make their own informed decision. So here is a tiny bit of basic understanding do with it what you will. Our pupils act as a natural aperture, increasing or decreasing in diameter to capture more or less light from our surroundings as needed. This is similar to a camera lens. The sun is constantly emitting UV or ultraviolet radiation. We cannot see these waves they are why we get a sunburn if we're out in the sun without protection. The UV light damages skin cells, resulting in inflamed skin. Looking directly at the sun is like asking for a sunburn on one of the most sensitive and important parts of your body. Now imagine looking at the sun during totality. This is actually safe. It's dark. Your pupils are really open and dilated, allowing you to see in low light. But then, those very first UV rays hit your eyes when they're fully dilated, taking you by surprise and intense enough to damage your retinas. Don't be silly, just get yourself some eye protection. Something like this works just fine. These are linked somewhere down there. Now, back to the eclipse. When totality ends and the moon starts to pull away from the sun, the order of events is reversed. At first, the umbra is gone, but you're still in the penumbral shadow. The umbral shadow of the moon is pretty small where it hits the earth. This means a total eclipse is a local event 
If you're too far north or south, you don't get a total eclipse, you only get a partial one. Which is still pretty impressive, because you miss most eclipses entirely. While a total solar eclipse happens somewhere on Earth every year or two, any given point on Earth only experiences this event every 400 years or so. Also, remember that the Moon's orbit around the Earth is an ellipse, not perfectly circular. This means that sometimes the moon is closer to the Earth, and sometimes it's farther away. If a solar eclipse happens when the moon is at the far end of its orbit, it can actually be smaller than the sun in the sky. So it doesn't block the entire face of the sun, leaving a ring of light around the new moon. This is called an annular eclipse. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for the next eclipse. Not sure when that is for your area, but you can check out that space link below to find out when you're gonna next need these things. And if you want to learn more science, you can check out this video next. Can't see anything. <laughs> Hello? Hello. You're good.